Hey everyone, today we're talking about the top five pros and cons of living in Maryland and we're getting started right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we talk about all things living in Maryland. So if that's the kind of information you're looking for, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of our new weekly videos that we are putting out. And if you ever have any questions on a residential real estate, feel free to reach out. I love taking your calls about all things real estate here in the state of Maryland. You can reach out to me on my number, um, the number you see on your screen anytime. And let's jump right into the top five pros and cons of living in Maryland. Okay, pro number one of living in Maryland is Maryland has jobs and lots of them, uh, specifically driven by the government, um, more specifically the federal government. Um, you're gonna find a lot of job opportunities here in central Maryland, as well as uh, Montgomery, PG County, the county surrounding um, DC, but you also have a lot of government contracting all throughout um, central Maryland, all the way up to uh, the Baltimore area. So you're gonna see um, a lot of jobs here in the state. And because of that, Maryland is the wealthiest state in America um, with an average household income of just about $83,000 a year, as well as one in 12 families and households rather in Maryland being millionaires. Okay, and con number one of living in Maryland, we're gonna piggyback off of pro number one. Typically where there's a lot of work opportunity also comes higher cost of living and you are gonna find that here in Maryland. So with the average home price here in Maryland jumping up 11.5% from last year from $354,000 to right below $400,000. So that's what you can expect to spend on a home here in Maryland. Although you do wanna research locations. So like for example, if you're gonna be in the Baltimore County area, the average home price is gonna be probably around $300,000. But if you're gonna be in certain parts of Montgomery County um, surrounding DC, you can expect that average home price to jump up to almost $600,000 depending on the part of the um, county that you're in. So it's gonna range um, significantly depending on the area, but the average in the state is gonna be right around $400,000. Okay, pro number two of living in Maryland is all the outdoor activities that there are. So if you like to be outdoors, um, you are gonna love Maryland. So with over 40% of Maryland being wooded, you are gonna find several national and state parks all throughout Maryland. So if you like to get outdoors and hike, um, you're gonna find a lot of opportunities here in Maryland. Also, there are several rivers throughout the state, uh, Patapsco and Patuxent, just to name a couple, um, where you're gonna have a lot of opportunities to get out and canoe and paddle enjoy all the outdoor opportunities that maryland has to offer and if you like beaches maryland's got them so um, from baltimore you are roughly about three hours from ocean city um, it gets a little crazy and a little um, busy in ocean city so if you like it to be a little calmer um, a little more reserved um, delaware beaches just north are a great way to go as well um, and those still are under three and a half hours away. Um, and, and if you're near Ocean City, you gotta check out Assateague Island. Um, go check out the wild horses that are over there. I'm pretty sure they came over when we did. Um, so it's a great uh, way to see some history. Um, it borders Maryland and Virginia, and it's a great place to go with the family. Okay, con number two of living in Maryland is going to be the traffic. So in Maryland, we have two beltways. Um, DC's beltway is shared with Virginia, um, and that's 495, and then Baltimore has uh, 695. DC's Beltway is gonna be significantly busier, so you're gonna expect more traffic um, down that way. Um, but Baltimore still has its fair share of traffic on the Beltway, especially the parts um, surrounding 95. So you just wanna be aware of that. DC's can be busy pretty much all the time, so it's, it's really tough to tell you which part um, to avoid or when to expect it. It's just much more steady traffic um, down around DC. Uh, Maryland also has uh, major highways running north and south, 95, 29, and 295. 95 is probably the best option because it's about four to five lanes. Um, 295 is Baltimore Washington Parkway. It's only two lanes on each side um, and it's much more likely to have traffic. So I always tend to try to avoid that and stick to 95 um, with a lot less opportunity for bottlenecking and traffic. 
Also, I've got to admit, Marylanders are not very good drivers when it comes to rain and snow. So you can expect very slow moving um, driving when there's precipitation of any kind. You can definitely expect that. And then as if they don't tax us enough here in Maryland, I have noticed um, a growing number of speeding cameras all throughout the different interstates throughout Maryland. So you want to be careful of that um, so you can avoid those costly speeding tickets in the mail. Okay, pro number three of living in Maryland is the Maryland state pride and flag pride. So you are gonna see Maryland apparel, uh, the Maryland flag uh, all over the entire state, which is really cool. So Maryland's got a ton of pride and you're gonna see that everywhere. Um, you're gonna see the flag um, flown in front of businesses, uh, residential homes, uh, just everywhere. You're gonna see it more than the American flag. So you can expect that all, all throughout the state, um, which is really fun and really cool. Um, also, Maryland um, apparel. So you're going to see people wearing it all the time too. Everything from people's socks, shoes to I've even seen people wear a Maryland state flag uh, suit. That was kind of the most extreme thing I've ever seen. So you can expect um, all of those sorts of things when it comes to state and flag pride here in the state of Maryland. Okay, con number three of living in Maryland is going to be the taxes. So unfortunately, we are taxed pretty heavy here in the state of Maryland. So it's something you want to be prepared for and be aware of, depending on where you're coming uh, from. If you are coming from the middle of the country, it is something that you are going to notice. Um, so first and foremost, um, we are pretty heavily taxed when it comes to income tax. So this is something that you want to pay attention to. You're going to have a flat um, state income tax. Most of us are going to be right under 6%, 5.75%. Depending on your income, that could go down a little bit, but for the most part, it's gonna be um, that uh, percent charge. Also, the thing that you wanna be aware of here in the state of Maryland is every single county charges their own income tax. It ranges from two and a quarter percent all the way up to 3.2% at the highest. Um, for example, Baltimore City, Howard County, Montgomery County are examples of counties that charge the highest 3.2%. So you're gonna pay that along with your state income tax. So most of you are gonna be around the you know, high eights to, to nine range when it comes to income tax, specifically for Maryland. That's not including your federal. Okay, next are property taxes. So this is something else that you wanna be aware of as well. Um, for the most part, Maryland's not too bad when it comes to the actual percentages. Um, most of the counties throughout Maryland are close to just right around 1%. Um, but then you got your fire tax, um, you've got some state uh, property tax, Maryland does charge a small percentage, so most of you are gonna pay three to 500 a year. So it's not a ton, um, but you are gonna have that as well. And then several counties throughout Maryland uh, charge through your property taxes for your trash, so that can range from 250 to $400 a year. Um, but the easiest way to think of property taxes is on the fair market value, it's usually right around one to one and a quarter percent. Um, is what you're gonna you're gonna pay. So it's not that bad compared to areas like Chicago, New York. Um, but because Maryland does have such high property values, you are gonna notice that property taxes are pretty high, especially if you're coming from other parts of the country where it is less expensive. So if you do end up buying a home here in Maryland, you want to make sure to apply for what's called the homestead credit. Um, so it's really not any kind of specific credit, but what it does do is it protects Maryland homeowners against excessive assessment increases um, in an individual year. So it's going to cap that assessment at 10%. So it's going to limit your taxes from growing um, larger than they otherwise would have. So this is something once you're in the home a year, you want to make sure you apply for just to minimize those um, hefty property tax increases. And then here in Maryland, sales tax is 6% on everything but groceries. Um, the counties or locally do not charge um, an additional sales tax. It's just gonna be a flat 6% all throughout the state of Maryland. Pro number four of living in Maryland is sports, and we've got lots of them as well. So Maryland has two um, NFL teams, obviously the Ravens, uh, Baltimore's team, but then uh, Washington Redskins or the Washington football team now, uh, FedEx Stadium is actually located in Landover, Maryland, which is Prince George's County. Um, so even though they are more associated with DC, their home field is in Maryland. So you are gonna see a lot of people specifically in Montgomery County, Prince George's County and Southern Maryland. You're gonna see a lot more Redskin fans. And then north of those counties, 
you're gonna see predominantly um, Ravens territory and those other areas. And then as well, the Baltimore Orioles, you're gonna see a ton of diehard baseball fans out here. And then growing in popularity is um, hockey with the Washington Capitals being nearby in DC, especially since they won the Stanley Cup in 2018. So Baltimore does not have a hockey team, um, but we're seeing more and more popularity and fans all throughout the state of Maryland um, for the Washington Capitals. So there's also a ton of college sports here in the state of Maryland. So you've got the Maryland Terps representing the University of Maryland at College Park. And then you've also got the Naval Academy. So you're gonna see a ton of Navy fans um, in and around Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And then you've got UMBC and Towson representing Baltimore. UMBC gained a ton of popularity in 2018 when they knocked off the number one seed as a 16 seed. Um, they beat Virginia um, in the tournament and they were the only number 16 seed to ever knock off a number one. So that was, that was huge for them and they've uh, grown in popularity every, every year since. And then last but not least, you've got Johns Hopkins University of Lacrosse, uh, which is very popular, actually ranking number fourth in the entire state in revenue last year, bringing in over $4 million. Okay, con number four of living in Maryland is going to be dealing with the Bay Bridge and the growing number of tolls. Now, I separate the Bay Bridge when it comes to traffic just because it's a different animal. So you are gonna have to expect heavy amounts of traffic on the Bay Bridge, especially around the summer months because this is how everybody gets to Ocean City for the beach season. So you're gonna wanna plan around this if you can. Um, head out in off hours later in the evening. It's gonna give you the best shot at avoiding any kinds of traffic. But during rush hour, during normal times of the day, you are going to have to expect heavy amounts of traffic heading over to the Eastern Shore and the beaches. Also something you wanna know is that all tolls in Maryland are now cashless. So you are not gonna to have to stop anymore, which is gonna save you a ton of time. And this is something I pulled directly off Maryland's website, but Maryland is projecting that Marylanders will save over a million dollars and 44 hours of drive time by not having to stop at toll booths. So your best bet is to get an easy pass where you can link up your credit card and payment directly for when you use any of Maryland's tolls. But if you don't have that, Maryland is using what's called video tolling, where they're gonna take a picture of your license plate and they're gonna mail you um, a bill. So for use of that method, it's gonna be one and a half times the actual rate. So it is in your best interest to get an easy pass so you're not paying that additional fee. Um, but if you don't have it, you're just gonna get a bill in the mail. So it's it's no worries. The main tolls that you're gonna see here in Maryland is the Bay Bridge, which is gonna cut you across to um, the Eastern Shore to get you over to the beaches. Also a newer one here in Maryland is 200, which cuts you across from Central Maryland over to 270, which takes you from DC up to Frederick. So it saves you from getting on that beltway, which is where a ton of traffic is. So that's something that can definitely save you a lot of time. And then there's a couple around Baltimore that you wanna be aware of. Uh, Fort McHenry Tunnel and 895, which kind of cuts you across the bay. Um, so you can avoid going all the way up and around the beltway if you so choose to. Okay, and then for pro number five and con number five, I'm actually combining them to discuss the weather here in Maryland, because I think depending on where you come from, um, it could be a con or it could be a pro. So for me, I came from Southern California. I was uh, used to lots of sunshine, um, 70 degree days, mostly throughout the year. So for me coming to Maryland, it was definitely an adjustment. I was dealing with more things that I didn't like versus that I liked. Um, however, the weather here in Maryland is overall pretty mild. So I, I've got to say it certainly could be worse. We definitely get a decent amount of rain here in Maryland, averaging usually around 41 inches of precipitation a year. So um, comparing that, Nevada is actually the driest state in the country. They usually get around nine and a half inches a year. And then most of California comes in at around um, 16 to 18 inches a year. The great thing about Maryland is that we do get all four seasons here, mostly without the extreme. So you're not gonna see um, as cold of days as you will see in a lot of the Midwest and the Northeast. We are gonna get some snow here in Maryland, but for the most part, it just doesn't stay cold long enough for that snow to stick and to stay on the ground for more than a, a, you know, a day to three days. Um, so you are gonna see it all here in Maryland. The falls and the springs are beautiful. Um, they just never seem to last long enough. And it does seem like one to two times a month we do get pretty high winds here um, within Central Maryland, like 15 to 25 mile an hour winds. So that's something, especially with all the trees that we have, um, you wanna stay on top of like dead branches and things like that because I am constantly seeing those things fall. 
Um, so you just wanna be aware of that as well. You are gonna see that from time to time here in Maryland. All right, everyone, those are the five pros and cons of living here in Maryland. I hope you learned something new. If you ever have any questions or need anything at all, feel free to reach out or comment below, and we'll see you at the next video.